So what I'm going to look at here is how to actually run what the experience is like when you have a Teams live event. Now what I've already done is I have gone into Teams, I have already gone and scheduled uh, my webinar here, which I will get attendees obviously to participate in so we can have a look at the attendee experience, but also the presenter experience as well. So we'll run over that uh, in more detail shortly. But before we do that, why don't we just go out and refresh ourselves as the difference between Teams live events and normal Teams meetings. So the important thing to remember here that there are some differences and sort of target audiences when it comes to meetings and events in uh, Microsoft Teams. So typically the standard meeting is everybody's at the same level, they can all participate, they can uh, speak, they can show their video, they can unmute themselves and potentially have some control um, over how the meeting is conducted. Uh, the alternate is events, so that's what we're going to look at here and basically that's more a broadcast medium where we nominate a number of presenters, they then uh, present their content and the attendees basically consume that content and can ask questions and answers typically through a, uh, a text interface or a chat style interface. So that is the major difference between them. More ad hoc meetings typically done uh, with the traditional meetings, which is a quick and easy process. The events which we're showing here, a little bit more set up, but again, aimed uh, more at a broadcast or method of uh, delivery. So again, the idea here is we have our live events, which we're focusing on here. They're aimed to be uh, potentially up to a studio grade, a uh, high profile event. You can run these for very, very large audiences. You can, however, conduct them for smaller audiences if you are after the controls uh, that it provides. So we will dive into that now so you can have a look and get some idea of what Teams uh, events actually provide. Okay, so I'm here on uh, my event ready to go. Now what I'm going to do firstly is I'm going to get the attendee link. So this is the experience that the attendee is uh, going to have um, viewing that environment. Now we haven't started the event, so let's just pop over and have a look. So this is a completely different screen uh, machine, as you said. So let me just run this uh, browser here, and what we'll do is we'll run that uh, in a private session as well. So let's go to a private window there and just get rid of the other one and just move this across, give us a bit more room and I'm going to basically paste that link in there so we can see uh, the experience here. Now remember this user isn't logged into any Azure AD or Office 365 so if they do have Teams, uh, the desktop app, they can open that if they want but I'm not going to do that. You then have the option again to download the app or watch on the web so I'm going to watch it on the web straight in a browser uh, now. Now, once it does that, you'll see that I now get the option to sign in. So I can sign in to identify myself. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to join that anonymously. Now, now that I've joined, you'll see that I get indication that the event hasn't started as yet. Here's my Q&A. So I can go in and, for example, let's go in here and ask a question. You'll see that I can put my uh, name in here. So in this case, I'm going to uh, put my name in and indicate the browser that I'm coming from. And I'm going to say has this event started all right so we will then basically get that and be able to potentially respond to it now remember the event hasn't necessarily started uh, as yet now let's have a look at what the experience is like say uh, in edge so again we'll go into the new chromium based edge browser in private again because for an attendee we can go in and simply uh, apply uh, this link again so let me just resize that so we can again make sure that we can see uh, what's going on here uh, across our environment. So let's just make that a little bit smaller so we can now get that variation. Let's post that same link into our Chromium based uh, Edge browser. You'll see that I get the same sort of dialogue here. Okay, so I'm basically not wanting to open it in Teams. I'm going to basically watch it on the web as well. So the experience, again, is very similar across uh, any modern browser here. So again, same sort of thing, uh, basically, as we had before. All right, so what I'll do again is I will pop back to the administrator. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in here and I'm actually going to join the event. So I'm actually going to log in here, start the event, um, as basically the producer or the presenter um, of the. So all we need to do is simply select the join button there. That's going to uh, kick it off. 
and you'll see in a second it'll come up and give me um, a very different sort of environment to what I'm used to with normal Teams meetings. Now again, I don't have any video camera or uh, microphone connected to uh, this virtual machine. All right, so I'm going to dismiss all of those. So you'll see up here I get an indication of the name of the event, how long I've been in here, the attendee. So the attendee again is that one anonymous user who's joining the browser on the other machine and you'll see that we have an indication that this is a pre-live so we haven't actually gone live as yet we also can leave the event you'll see we get some indicators over here so one of the important things maybe to check is to go in and look at the health and performance so you can see the network performance uh, devices cameras and so on this is our q a so again you'll see this is our q a panel so you'll see in here this is where the question that was asked already so again what i can do is i can publish that question so again everybody basically uh, sees that and then what i can do is go in here um, and say that i'm starting soon all right so that's a reply to that that everyone will be able to see you'll see that i can take meeting notes now meeting notes are available to the presenters right so it's not available to the attendees we've also got chat again the chat is available to presenters so if you have multiple presenters and you're switching between screens we can go in here and we can invite people again this is an invitation for them to attend uh, basically as a presenter so we can invite people in to come and present and we've also got our settings pane here to control our devices if we want. All right, so again, we can get rid of this simply by closing it. Now, you'll see here that I have the option uh, down the bottom here to go in and share my content. So what I'm gonna do here is let me fire up uh, another browser here. So it's a little bit tough to uh, do this, uh, again, presentation on a, on a machine with a single screen, but hopefully you'll get the feel for this. So let's go into let's say our Office 365, so we get an idea of what the look and the feel is. All right, so we'll just expand that a little bit. All right, so what we wanna do now is we wanna present uh, basically this browser screen. So what we can do now is we can go in here and we can select the option to share. Now when I share, you'll see I've got the option to do my whole desktop or I can do a window or I can do an application. So in this case, I'm going to select this application here um, in this browser that I want to show. Now again, uh, because we're working in a single browser, it can be uh, a little bit challenging uh, to do that. So just keep that in mind. So let me go back again to the live event here. You'll see again, I am sharing that desktop, but again, the event has not started here, right? So you haven't, there's nothing in there uh, for me to go, but you'll see the content uh, basically is uh, ready to go. So what I can do here is uh, basically select the content. And when I do that, you'll see it now appears in the queue. So this is the queue of information that will be shown uh, to the attendees. But again, still not live yet. To send it live, I can obviously just select this button and this will now push it into the live event area. And the last one here, again, we can add the screen. We can add more content over there if we wish but let's go back to that screen and what we're going to do is we're going to send it live so it's now going to push it into that ready to go but as yet we still haven't started so if i go back and look at the uh, attendee here so let's go back and have a look at the attendee you'll see that again the event hasn't started we haven't pushed the button to actually uh, kick it off so again, if I have a look here, you'll see that, again, I've answered that question uh, for the user. But again, as yet, there is no content because we haven't uh, selected the option to make it go live. Now, when I press this button, it is going to ask me a few questions and confirm, and then it will start pushing that uh, event out live. Now, the important thing to remember here is that when we do that, there is a delay when the attendee is watching. So think of it a seven second delay like we have on radio. So the idea with that is, is because I've selected the option to record this at the same time. So it's actually recording it uh, at the same time. So there's a slight delay while it writes that recording and then it will show it to the attendee. All right, so I'm gonna select start here. This will kick it off. I'm going to go, yes, it's going to go live now. So it's gonna go starting the event. So if I now quickly pop back to the attendee, you'll see that even though we have started the event, it will kick off in a short while here and the presentation again will be beginning in a slight delay behind uh, the way that the producer uh, or the presenter is actually showing. So here we go, it's kicked off. Again, I can push the play button here. So you'll now see that 
In this case, down the bottom, uh, it is live, so that's got an indication that it's not a replay. Uh, it actually is live, and any of the changes, any of the things that are displayed on the screen uh, basically uh, will be shown to the user. So let's pop back to our presenter here. Let's go back to the application in question, and let's go into, let's go into for example, our OneDrive here. Run that up and give the screen a, a bit of a different look and feel here. You might see a bit of flickering there again because we're doing all of this on a single screen. Best practice would be is to use uh, multiple screens for this. So you'll see that we can go into Word. Let's go in and maybe start a new blank document. Okay, and uh, put some text in there so you've got a feeling of uh, what's going on. All right, so. Again, let's just pop back and see what our uh, attendee is uh, actually seeing. All right, so again, you'll see that there's that lag of a number of seconds. So you'll see that it's gone into Word as I just did, and uh, basically it will uh, then mimic what I was doing. Now, the thing here is that if this person is able to uh, basically watch it live, uh, as we see, they can pause it and then because it's being recorded they can pick up from that point going forward so think of it uh, basically uh, like um, a DVR recording. Okay so what I'm going to do now is I will pop back to the uh, administration area so let's go back to the people uh, actually uh, sharing this information and let's say that I have now finished uh, with my presentation I'll indicate again up the top here that it's running live and I only have one attendee, I've been running for about seven minutes. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to end the session. It's going to uh, get me to confirm that. All right, so it's now uh, ended the session here. Now if I go back to and have a look at my attendee here, what we should see uh, in a short period of time is that the event has uh, ended. So again, we do have the ability to watch this uh, live. Now, one of the other advantages is, is because it's done that auto recording, what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to come in after the fact and we will be able to view that recording and stream. So we see that the live event um, has now ended. Now, as an example here, let me open another uh, private window, completely different session and again, post in that link. We go through the same process of watching it on the web. And remember, this is like a completely different anonymous user and we'll join anonymously. And what we'll see here is that we now have the recording, right? So we note down the bottom here, we don't have the option indicating it's live, but we are seeing the recording straight away, all right? Now, if you do type a question in, the presenter would need to come back into this same meeting to answer that question after the fact. Uh, so that is one of the downsides, obviously, of watching a recording after the fact. But you'll see now I get this ability to use that same URL, even if I'm late to the event to watch what's ever recorded. So if you do come 15 minutes late, you can just go to the same URL and you can view the recording um, up to the point that it's currently at. So nice and easy to work with. And remember, it can be viewed live, but it also uh, the options that I've set up in the appointment there allow it to be viewed as recording. Now with the event over here as a presenter, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave this area. So I finished presenting uh, in total, it's gonna to end that call. All right, now you'll see that I have files, uh, chat. Remember that is uh, for any of the presenters in that environment. I can rejoin, so if I need to rejoin and potentially look at any comments people have uh, made. Uh, after the fact, I can uh, do that. Now if I go back to my calendar and I look at the actual appointment here, you'll see down the bottom here that I now have some live event resources and they include the ability to download the recording the Q&A report, so this is obviously the questions that were asked by attendee and the answers made by presenters. I can look at an engagement report as well, and you'll see here is the option that I can disable the recording for attendees. So if I don't want attendees to be able to view the recording like I've just shown you after the fact, we would go in and disable that. So if you want to record it live, download it, and then disable the people to watch that replay. Now remember, if you don't disable that, that replay on that URL that you've shared, so if you do go out and share this attendee link and you don't select to disable the recording, anybody at a later stage can select that, go into uh, the environment and view that recording. So it stays live effectively or viewable 
uh, for an extended period of time. So if you don't want that, make sure you go in and disable this. We've also got the transcript as well. So if we had spoken text, we'd see that converted and that becomes searchable as well. If we go into our advanced options here, we also have a backup recording. So if for some reason that initial recording was corrupted or something went wrong with it, uh, we basically do have uh, the backup recording there. Now, if you want to get rid of all those resources, we can simply delete all and they won't be available uh, basically uh, for the users. So what I'll do here is let me go in and disable that recording for employees. You'll see, or attendees, you'll see that I can re-enable it if I want. And let us pop back into our other machine here. All right, so let's just close uh, this one here and reopen once again in an in-private browser. Now that that recording has been disabled, let's pop that in and again, cancel that. View on the web page uh, instead. All right, and let's see what happens when we do this. So let's join uh, anonymously. All right. Okay, so again, it hasn't fully uh, yet uncache that it might take up to 15 minutes to do that but remember that if you do want to disable uh, this ability here for users going forward make sure that you do uh, go back into the event and you do select the, op uh, the op option here to disable that recording uh, for the attendees and again if I want to download it all I need to do is select that or give me a nice mp4 file that I can uh, upload. So in summary, what we've done is once we've created the appointment, we basically uh, go in here and we join the meeting. We then uh, work out what assets we want to uh, share, and then we need to make the event live. Now, when the event goes live, our attendees can view it through the link that is provided at the top of the page here, and they will typically get a 30 second or so, a minute or so delay uh, in what is actually presented because remember it's typically recording in the background. The advantage for that is the user can go in at a later date with on the same link and directly view uh, that recording. So that makes it nice and uh, easy for them to always have it available. And remember, once you do finish the event as a presenter, you can come in here and you can control uh, the event resources. And again, a lot of these resources were based on the options that were selected when the appointment was created. So if you want a recording, you need to select that when you do create the appointment. And we do have the ability to control this after the fact. And if we want to delete all of that, um, if that is the way we wish to proceed. So hopefully that's given you an idea of what it's like uh, with the basics to run a live event. Remember, a live event is typically targeted at an audience whom uh, you just wish to ask Q&A, typically uh, via a chat box. It's not designed for them to interact with their own video or their own uh, voice. Uh, in a meeting that's, again, handled by the standard Teams meetings, this is a live event mainly designed for webinars and uh, in-person events as well. So you can certainly use that in smaller uh, environments if that's what you need more need more control over the audience potentially have multiple presenters and multiple cameras and things like that a live event will probably suit your needs better but the great thing is with teams you've got the option to do both whatever suits you need they're both available no additional cost you can record that and make that available to anybody without them having the need to pay for a license or have any special software they can do all of that through the browser so thank you very much for watching the video